Hey guys, this is Balu from Balu Prime and once again welcome you all back for an exciting tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how we can create this kind of skulls dropping into this jar kind of animation using rigid body physics in Blender easily. So hope you guys will find this tutorial useful but before going to that if you end up liking this video please click on that like button to share this content and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing my channel and support me. And by the way if you like short 3D simulation videos you can check out my second channel link in the description. So now without any further ado let's start today's video. So here you can see I'm using Blender 3.2, nice. So first of all, let's select everything in this default scene by pressing A on the keyboard and delete. So now let's start this by modeling a simple jar. So further go to this add mesh, select this cylinder. So press S and increase the scaling, press S, Z and increase the scaling in Z axis like this. Now press one for front view, Z, Z and let's place this just above to this grid here. Okay, so now press tab on the keyboard select this face mode select this face here and delete it so let's delete the face so now let's add edge loops so ctrl plus r being in this edit mode press ctrl plus r and let's place this edge loop here now again let's add another let it be here and let's add another so ctrl r and let it be here so this is fine so now let's select this edge selection Let's select this edge, hold Alt key and click on this edge here so that the complete edge will be selected. Now press S and reduce the scaling. So we get this shape. So now let's select this edges here, hold Alt key and select this side edge. Now Ctrl plus B and scroll the mouse sideward and use scrolling key to add these sub loops. So I think this is fine and for these edges also let's do the same. So select single edge, hold alt key and select this side edge. Now hold shift key and select these edges and also these edges. Now control plus B and just slide the mouse sidewards so that we get this sub edges added. So I think this height we need to reduce. So select this edge, hold alt key and select this side edge. To select all the edges now z z and let's bring it down here okay so press tab to exit this edit mode now come to this modifier options add modifier and add this solidify modifier so now we are going to add some thickness so let's add thickness outwards so let this be minus value so i think 0 0.02 is fine nice so now right click and shade smooth now come to this object data properties, normals and select this auto smooth. So now this is looking good. Now come to this modifier options and let's apply this modifiers. So drop down and apply. So now we got our jar ready. So let's add a ground plane. So go to this add mesh select plane here. Press S and increase the scaling. So this is going to the ground plane. Press 1 for front view. So make sure our jar is just resting above this plane so z z and let's place this here so now this is fine okay so now let's import a skull model you can use any of the objects you like so here i will be using a skull model which i have downloaded from online source i will leave a link in the description for that if you want to use the same so go to this file import it is an object file so select this wavefront obj and let's select the skull and import obj so here we got the skull Z, Z. So here you can see we got this skull here, stylized skull. So let's reduce the scaling, select the skull, press S and reduce the scaling. So I think this much is fine. And let's apply the transforms. So being selected this skull, go to this object, apply, apply all transforms. And this for jar also, select the jar, object, apply, apply all transforms, nice. So now let's duplicate the skulls. So here you can manually duplicate this or else you can use array modifier. So here I will be using the modifier. So select the skull, come to this add modifier and add array. So here we got these two skulls. So here in this options, let's increase the count to three and let's bring some space between these two skulls though so that they are not intersecting with each other. So I think 1.1 would be fine. Okay, so press seven for top view and let's bring them at the center so z 
x and let it be here and z y and let them here nice so now again duplicate this array modifier so drop down duplicate this modifier so now let's make this x axis factor 0 and increase this y axis to 1.1 so that we will get this added in y axis press on for top view so i think z y and let's place them here okay so again duplicate the error modifier so drop down duplicate and now make this y is 0 and make this z 1.1 so here we got this added along the z axis so for this z axis i will increase the count so let it be i think 12 12 would be fine so after that we need to apply the modifiers so drop down apply or else you can place mouse on the space and press ctrl plus a to apply modifiers okay so now all these are single object but we want these skulls to be individual so for that select this skull press tab on the keyboard for edit mode and by the way if all these vertices are not selected press a on the keyboard to select all the vertices of the object now press p on the keyboard and select this by loose parts so now we will get these skulls as individual objects now again press tab to exit this edit mode so now if i check this skull and if i check the origin point you can see the origin point of this skull is at the bottom so we need to reset the origin point for all the skulls so select all the skulls here come to this object set origin origin to geometry so now each skull will have that origin point at its center so if i select this if i select this you can see the origin point is at the center so now let's add rigid body properties here so select any of the skull here come to this physics property and add rigid body so type let it be active and shape change it to mesh so now if i play this this skull will be falling down nice so now we need to copy this physics property rigid body property to rest of the skulls so instead of adding manually one by one we can do that in a single click so for that first select the character or select the skull where we have applied the rigid body after that press b on the keyboard for box selection and select the rest of the skulls okay now come to this object rigid body and select copy from active so now each and every skull will have that property so if i select this one you can see it got that physics property and if i play this you can see all the skulls will be falling down so now let's make this jar an obstacle so that the skulls will be filled in this jar so for that select this jar come to this physics property once again and apply rigid body but in type we will be selecting passive so now if we play this the skulls will be interacting but they are not falling inside the jar so for that select the jar once again come to the shape option and change it to mesh so now if we play this you can see the skulls will be falling inside the jar nice so let's select the plane once again add rigid body let it be passive so now let's add materials so first for this jar i want to add glass material so let's move on to this material viewport select the jar come to this material options add new material so in surface change it to glass bsdf so now this is not looking like glass so if i play this so now here you can see the skulls which are falling inside these are not visible from the outside so actually glass should be transparent so we need to make this jar to look like transparent glass so for that let's come to this render properties let's add ambient occlusion so that we get some nice occlusions here and this is important enable the screen space reflections and refractions after that come to this material properties so here we'll get this option like screen space reflections so add this enable the screen space refractions now you can see we are seeing the skulls which are inside this jar so if you increase the distance it will be distorted like this so keep this value to the minimum so i think 0 0.25 is fine so i think this is fine nice so for this skulls it already got some materials okay so let's add material wood material for this ground plane so select the plane add new material 
So let's move on to the sharing tab. Click on the sharing. Come to this principal PSDF. Select this principal PSDF and press Ctrl plus T for Node Wrangler. And by the way, if you are not enabled Node Wrangler, go to this Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and look for Node, such as Node. By default, this Node Wrangler will be disabled. Enable it. Save those preferences and close. Later, select this principal PSDF and press Ctrl plus T to get these nodes. So from here we can select any wood texture. So let's select a wood material. Open. So here I will be selecting this wood material. Select that one and open. So here you can see we got that wood. So let's add some curves. So let's bring this here. Shift A. Insert such as curves. Select this RGB and place them in between these two nodes. And let's bring this curve downwards a bit so that it makes this wood a bit dark. Nice. So let's move on to this layout. So let's reduce the specular. We don't want the specular. And or else let's add a bit specular here. Roughness. Let's increase the roughness. So now let's move on to this render viewport. So currently the scene is looking dark because there is no light in the scene. So let's add HDRA. So come to this world properties. Click on this color option and add environment texture. So from here we can load any HDRA. So I will be loading an HDR which I have downloaded from Polyheaven. So after that we need to select the HDRA. So open. So here I will be selecting this HDRA. Open. So now we got some light in the scene. So if you don't want to have this background visible in render, we can hide that out. So come to this render properties, scroll down, come to this film options and enable this transparent so that we will not get that visibility. So let's add some light in the scene if you want to have shadows. So add light. I will add sun here. Press Z, Z. Let's bring it up. Let's place this aside. So press R and let's rotate this one so that we'll get the shadows. So here you can see we are getting shadows. So if you want to increase the intensity, come to this light properties and let's increase the strength here. So now we got some shadows here. So in order to render this scene, we need to have camera. So go to this add camera. So control alt zero to see through camera. Press N on the keyboard. Come to this view options and enable this lock to 3D cursor and lock to camera view. So now we can adjust the camera angle whichever you like. So once the angle and the position of the camera is set, first we need to bake the simulation in order to render this scene. So for that select any of this color object where we have applied rigid body. So come to this scene properties here, click on this cone shape kind of thing and come to this rigid body world, come to this cache option, here we will get this cache option. So if you want to have the simulation to stop at certain frames, you can enter the end frame. So here I want the simulation to be 1 to 250. So I will leave this to 1 to 250. So after that, just click on this bake button. So once the baking is done, come to this output properties. Here we can set the resolution. So currently this is set to full HD. I will leave this to full HD. Enable this render to region, crop to region. Come to this frame rate. Here you can change the frame rate. So I will select this 30 FPS and frame range 1 to 250 is fine and by the way if you want to have this simulation to be a bit slow come to this time stretching so here we can increase this so if i increase this to 200 the simulation will be slower and if i change this to 50 the simulation will be fast so depending upon your choice you can change this number so i will leave this to actual simulation only so after that, here we need to select the output folder where we can save the files. So let's select a folder. So here I have selected an output folder where I have to save the files. So after that, file format, you can select either JPEG, PNG or else you can directly render in this video format only. So here I will be rendering in JPEG. So let's select this JPEG and quality, let it be 100. So once this output properties or output settings was done, come to this render options and click on this render animation. So it starts to render this scene frame by frame. So in this way, we can create this kind of scene using rigid body physics in Blender easily. So hope you guys have learned something new from this tutorial. If you have learned anything new, please like, share and subscribe my channel to support me. So we'll meet in the next video. Until then, signing off. Take care. Bye.